Hello and welcome to this reading. This is a very short reading in general for the monthly horoscopes of December, but I will break it down for all the signs as well very shortly in a minute. So, uh, and later on, you will um, receive the videos, I think not next week, but within a week or two, I'm going to make the videos again separately for the monthly horoscopes, but a bit broader for every single specific sign. So this is actually some sort of a resume, which is interesting. When the energies are coming, it's pretty interesting to know a bit the overview, not too much in detail, but I hope I will be able to give that to you. And when I look at the month of December, thank God, it's not such an eventful month at all. So no eclipses anymore. No Mars square Neptune. You know, we are in the midst, as I'm recording this, of the Mars square Neptune. That is a vibe of people being a bit insecure about how they have to act or not act or what their intentions are. But in December, that is all gone. So that's the first good news that December is more of a slow month. And speaking of slow, I want to I want to break this down into two significant things that are happening in December. First of all, Jupiter will be going back into Aries. And secondly, talking about slow, Mercury is going retrograde in Capricorn at the very end of the month. So these things are very significant for the flavor of that month. It means on the one hand, we are going to reflect a lot, which is a bit common, you know, at the end of the year, we kind of reflect what has been going on lately and uh, or lately i mean the year of 2022 this go this is happening in capricorn so at the very end of the month so around the 30th capricorn is going retrograde at 24 degrees of capricorn so that is a sign of structures and i'll get back in a minute to all the different signs but all of us are going to rethink some certain uh, certain structures in our lives and how we have to redo it and um, to do that in a very competent and very qualitative important way that is a bit how i'm seeing this and this whole mercury retrograde is quite a positive one why because it's when it starts to go retrograde it's together with venus so you you have this venus mercury together in capricorn so that shows beautiful words in a beautiful way saying your truth so not in a harsh way like mercury mars it doesn't care what the how other people are going to receive the message but with the venus with mercury it shows that people do care how they and that's that is good energy especially at the end of the year if people um uh people who celebrate you know christmas and and um a new year of that and when they're seeing family and all of that you know venus with mercury is a very beautiful energy it's uh, better than you know all that feisty energy going on and i'm going to speak my truth and all the old triggers come up you know family do family members do trigger a lot why they are very karmic important links of course and um but not always in a positive way so and they're supposed to be like that to let us grow but anyway I'm digressing here but this is like yeah people are going to um you know venus and, and mercury in the sign that is ruled by saturn that is ruled by a mastery that is ruled by hey i know how to bit my tongue or how do you say that it's a good vibe to see at the end of the year for people who are celebrating these um you know christmas and all of that Anyway, besides that vibe of standing still in the structures and so on, Ju the, the, a bit of a opposite vibe is Jupiter. Jupiter shifts from um, Pisces into Aries and that is around and about the 21st of um, the month. So there is indeed also a very buoyant energy that I love to see, you know, Jupiter in Aries it's definitely one of my favorite positions and uh, for Jupiter to be because it's fiery, it's buoyant, it's, it's enthusiastic and it, it doesn't want to harm anyone. It just wants to be and it's just uh, in an instinctive way, it it's just wants to have fun and be enthusiastic and also to be active very much. So we're all going to be quite active at the end of the month as well. So 
three things that are quite um, important. Not the oh yes, the, the the last thing, the third thing is this Mars square Neptune that I've been talking about and that has been going on for quite a while, it has stopped now. And uh, but uh, certainly in the beginning of the month, this Mars is not going to square up to Neptune anymore. But it's going to oppose other planets that are passing in Sagittarius. So. I do, I do think, though, because the sign of Sagittarius and Gemini is very buoyant, is very lively, if you want to use it in a right way, it's actually um, to, to find that balance between the bigger picture and between the details and the way that we perceive things so that we are not just being with the practical things and, and uh, you know, Mars and Gemini wants to do like three different things at the same time and it's, it wants to do it now and it wants to do it in the mental way as well. And sometimes it wants to go to the left and then to the right. But that Sagittarian energy can give us this helicopter view, which I really, really like. So that's the beginning of the month. The sun will pass opposing uh, Mars and um that will be around the 8th of December and the very beginning of December even Venus opposes Mars. But that is very temporary, very one or two days that you're going to feel that. But it's that energy of the bigger picture and the detail. So let's get started for all the signs. What is that all about? Now for Aries people in general, it's a pretty, pretty important month because all these things that I was talking about in the beginning are related to cardinal signs and you are a cardinal sign. So you are really definitely going to feel Jupiter back in your home time. Isn't that a great thing? I'm looking forward to that. You know, when I have my moon in Aries and I definitely felt Jupiter dancing around my moon, which I absolutely loved. I hope you, whether it is your sun sign, which is a bit more about your identity and more about your work or more about who you are, having Jupiter there is, is amazing. And at the end of the month, you are getting a chance again. It's a bit similar towards the month of May because then Jupiter for the first time went in Aries. So you could do things that has to do with your life part. I mean, the first house is definitely everything. It's your, it's, um, it, it's, it's impossible not to be general here, uh, not to be tailor made making videos because Jupiter in the first house can mean new relationships. It can mean a new job. It can be a, a new life path, so to speak, and you growing and expanding and being actually, I think the most important thing is being more confident. And um, yes, they say a lot about Aries people that they're always confident and so on and so on. But sometimes they do dis disguise their confidence uh, when they are a little bit scared there. But now with this Jupiter, it's very authentic. It's very real. It's it's bringing out the best of these Aries people. And I absolutely love it when you've got some plans for the year um, ahead. This is fantastic energy with Jupiter around the, the 21st of the month entering your sign again. It's like hope. You know, it's a lot of hope. It's a lot of beautiful, positive energy. Um, it was in your 12th house lately and although that is nice as well, but it's on a totally different level. It's on a level of uh, that you don't see. This is way more tangible. So go out there, travel if you can, read if you can, um, do some philosophy or read some philosophy book, expands to the fullest. And this Mercury and uh, Venus that I was talking about coming together and st stationary, you know, standing still and then going backwards, it's happening in Capricorn in your 10th house. So you are one of those people that are going to think about your job a lot, your career, your job. If you don't have a, a career and job, you're 78, for instance, it could have to do with the way that you want to, um, how you want to be seen by the world, because there is something that you want to change, but you're doing it in a strategic way. And that's the best thing as well. And you're doing it with not hurting or harming or stepping on the toes of other people, which is mostly what Aries people do. You know, they, they just go bluntly forwards and, and they say, hey, but what, what about the other people? Oh, OK, OK, OK. So um, you're going to be a little bit more um, strategic 
when it comes and less impulsive when it comes to your career i think that's a good thing i would say make the use make the most of it and especially if you want to change your career because when mercury goes direct you will have a possibility to uh, to do that and Mercury goes direct around the 19th of January. So if you've got planets at eight degrees, because it goes direct again at eight degrees, you will feel it very strongly. Or if you've got planets around and about 26 uh, degrees, did I say 24 at the beginning? Uh, it, oh, yes, 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 it's 24, sorry. So yes, at 24 degrees of Aries, you're gonna feel it as well very strongly. So, um, I like this month for you Aries people. I like it. It's, it's, um, it's a very interesting month and um, with a lot of hope. Taurians, what is this all about? Now, this is a month that is less important for you when it comes to those life-changing events. It doesn't always, and, and I think you will like that. I think you will like that. Although your ruler, Venus, will bump into this Mercury that I was talking about in Capricorn, and thinking about, uh, you will be thinking a lot about what? About ninth house stuff. And this is, the Mercury retrograde is in a fellow earth sign and you are an earth sign and it's happening in your ninth house, which is one of my favorite houses. So what is that all about? It's the shift that you are making with your thinking. The way that you think on a higher level, the way you see yourself, your life, in a bigger perspective with all the different elements you have a capacity of by standing still by reflecting by um and, and you are good at that you know if you're not stubborn you can reflect upon your life when it comes to the bigger picture and this is a beautiful thing so i think a lot of taurians it's a trait that is not typically for the taurian but because of this constellation here they will say that a lot of taurians have that trait now of the philosopher and of being like seeing their life in a different way and and or travel as well you know at the end of the year there could be also um some traveling that you're gonna do or going back towards uh, a country that you've already been there could be a little bit of a uh, slowing down and some delays and but you know d dear old uh, d dear old dear good taurians you can deal with that very much then you say okay if i know i heard it from Virle that it's gonna be some delay i will bring in a good book and i'm gonna read a book and i'm just gonna chill I'm just gonna have some fun you know uh, be prepared for that but it's nothing that is going to be disturbing for you because as I said it's a fellow earth sign where the mercury retrograde goes so be open up until the um, the, the 19th of January so between when you are traveling between um, the mercury retrograde period it's going to something around that travel that you love a lot and that you value a lot you're gonna think about it a lot i mean i hope that makes sense but that is the venus mercury retrograde there and um so don't be afraid if you do travel if you say oh it's a mercury retrograde you were warned here that um it's all okay but there's a purpose here so you're gonna learn something there whilst you are traveling if it's not travel it could be studying it could be studying it could be reading a book that makes quite a difference here and, and quite an impact on you now jupiter shifts into aries into your 12th house now that is also a beautiful energy that is not really seen because the 12th house is a bit of a uh, unconscious house but it shows that you find meaning in retreat you find meaning in retreating a little bit and uh, just uh, being alone with yourself and, and and having fun with that and um, on another level it could mean that you find a lot of meaning in doing things behind the scenes you know whether it is working on a project or whether it is uh, um, you know whatever it is that you're trying to prepare because Jupiter is going to be in your sign very soon well very soon it's next year but anyway it is a bit of a uh, you could say a support that you're getting from the non-visible world almost I know this is difficult for a Taurian to accept because Taurus is with the feet on the ground and might be saying what the hell are you talking about Virle but it's really like they have this um the 12th house is the invisible world as well and with jupiter there it's like someone who who passed away 
um, they, they are like your, um, your guardian angels, so to speak. But anyway, that's for the Taurians. Gemini's, what is going on? Well, of course, you're going to have your full moon on the 8th. And that is already very nice on the, um, at 16 degrees of Gemini. So this full moon, definitely for you, for the Gemini, you are going to feel this energy very much of Sagittarian energy opposing your energy. So a lot of relationship stuff here is happening. And particularly, I could be a little bit passionate, you know, in a good way. It's having fun with that other person if you are in a... Um, in a physical way, if you know what I mean. But on, a, on another level, it can also mean like there are differences in what you want, what they want, and a bit of, of struggling there. So be aware that this is just temporary. Be aware that it is a give and a take and versus uh, your needs and their needs. But um, with Gemini, uh, with the full moon in Gemini, it definitely is all the spot on you and um, so it could be possible that you will have to speak your truth very much. But again, be aware that Mars in, in, um, in your sign can mean sometimes going a little bit over the top. So, um, but if you, know, if you are the kind of Gemini and you are saying in your relationship that, hey, I have to draw the line someday, you will during the first couple of days of, of the month. So... Um, so in that respect, it can be a good thing that when you are, you know, having trouble with showing what your boundaries are, this is the energy that you want to see because, but of course that got, that's going to have consequences. So, um, so you better do that step by step instead of bursting out. Right. So, um, so yes, but there is definitely a focus as well, a very focus on friends and on uh, people that are like-minded, um, people that uh, on your hopes and your wishes for the future. Wow, you've got this Jupiter going back into Aries for you in your 11th house, which is fantastic. So expect that you're going to be way more social and uh, being active in your social circle. And if you are single, you could meet someone from abroad that is very Jupiterian-like and finding more meaning in your friends or a friend becoming something more than that, if you want that to, of course. And, um, but definitely support from friends, to say the least, and very enthusiastic friends. You know, it's, it's in Aries. And, uh, um, it's to do things together and to have fun and to be hopeful and uh, for, for um, you know, it's a typical energy I see that, um, you know, just before the end of the year that you are going to celebrate and you're going to celebrate that with your friends. If you have your own business, this is very good. This Jupiter coming back into Aries because it means more money coming in from the business. And uh, it's a bit similar. Um this uh, when this Jupiter entered Aries around May time of this year. So maybe there were things in May that you wanted to do and you weren't able to that are connected with your uh, career, uh, that are connected with friends, that are connected with hopes and wishes that you want to implement. Well, you've got like a second chance, you could say. And then all of this energy in your eighth house. Wow, this is deep, you know, this Mercury and Venus in the eighth house of Capricorn is, and going retrograde there, is certainly showing you that when it comes to deep stuff, psychological stuff, stuff that you are scared of, and um, it's going to be triggered here, but in a way that you... Um, want to do it the right way that you uh you know it's in in this saturnal kind of uh, energy of the capricorn and you could be also for for um finances because this is a financial house as well you could be restructuring your finances uh, especially if you share it with a spouse or a friend or a girlfriend or a boyfriend you could really rearrange um and shift go in a different direction when it comes to those finances to improve it and, um, and then around the 19th of January, when this Mercury retrograde is over, you, you see the results of the, of the improvement. So certainly improvements is possible for, re, for investments and so on, but you will have to do something else. You will have to shift 
uh, something that um, you that is not working a hundred percent at the moment. On another level, you are understanding yourself better on a deep psychological level. So it could also mean that things come up and that has to do with, you know, life, death, transformation, fears, and something comes up and you want to tackle it. And But you're going to tackle it with a wise mind and with a very um, patience uh, on your behalf. And I think that's a very beautiful thing. Cancerians, a very important month for you because all these things like the Jupiter in Aries and the Mercury in uh, Capricorn, it's all in cardinal signs and you are also a cardinal sign. So this means an important time for you. Whenever this Jupiter in May was already in Aries. So this positive vibe of Jupiter in Aries for you is related mostly at the highest point of your horoscope, which is career, which is if, if you don't have a career or if you're not working, it's about how you want to be seen uh, by the world and, and your, your piece that you want to give to, you could say, the collective. But um, if you have your own business, for instance, this is a very good energy. It means that things go forward at the very, it's, it's a weird timing. I know uh, the 21st of October, things go forward uh, when it comes to career. Most people will just slow down with the career, you know, but it seems like you're going to be massively um, uh, working a lot or, or spending a lot of time at expanding um, whatever it is that you started, but in a, not in a way that it's like an overload or you're burning yourself out. No, in a way that is very enthusiastic, that, that gives you a, quite a lot of energy, uh, actually. So, um, so good for you. That is, use this energy of hope and uh, um, that, that can give you a very good vibe to proceed in time and, and to, to also for the new year that you can start with something new. You're pioneer, pioneering there and um, it will give its result next year. Now, the other Mercury retrograde that I was talking about in Capricorn has to do with your relationships because this is happening in your seventh house of relationships. So this Mercury and this Venus um, is going to uh, be at the very end of the month. You will feel this mostly. And um, so, and it's with Pluto. So there, uh, I've been talking about that so many times that Pluto in your opposite sign is all about your, your transforming your relationships for sure. But with Pluto, you can't do that overnight. You have to do this slowly but surely. So there's going to be some very important conversations here. So Venus in the seventh house shows that you want to solve the problem, whatever the problem or the crisis, or the, maybe there's something that is not working 100% in a relationship. Even if you're single, it could mean that the way that you relate to other people, nah, that's just something that you want to... Uh, that you want to clarify first and foremost and that you want to understand better um, and that's the mercury dancing around there definitely the other person will um, might be very stubborn or might have been very uh, challenging to deal with but now with this venus and mercury it seems like this other person if you are in a relationship is also willing to make some changes on the structure um, of course a lot of that is faded here with this Pluto. So um, um, if you're doing it in a slowly way and in a structured way, it's the only thing actually that you can do. You know, it takes two to tango. So a lot of kind of uh, relationships here for Cancerians will be tested for sure, but in a way to improve the structure of the relationship. So that is for those of you um, so if you run away from it, it, it's going to come up anyways with this Pluto, you know, whatever you keep under the surface, it's, it's going to get a lot of power there. And um, so there's definitely uh, for people who are in a relationship, a tendency of restructuring something for people who are single, those Cancerians, there's certainly someone there in your midst that's catching your eye and where you're learning a lot from when it comes to how you deal with relationships, how you deal with, um, you know, being wanting to be in a loving relationship, but not losing yourself, basically. 
That's, that's the point. By the way, that could also be the, the truth of the Cancerian that is in a relationship. Anyway, Leos. What is important here? For Leo, it's way more gentle. It's way more easy. Why? Because Jupiter, a fellow uh, fire sign, is going to enter the fi fellow fire sign again in the ninth house of Aries. That is, that is fantastic. I'm so glad for the Leos, you know, with recently the, the, the Saturn Uranus square. It was um, quite heavy for some of you. But this Jupiter, it's a bit similar when in May time, when Jupiter went into Aries, there is some stuff similar coming up here and giving you at least an opportunity to do some ninth house stuff that give you a lot of hope and a lot of expanse, expansion, but also a lot of purpose. So some of you Leos will study again or uh, will teach or will travel or at least read some books that are very, you know, expanding and hopeful for the mind. So this is about connecting with the divine and coming in line with the divine. It, it sounds a bit hollow and it sounds very abstract, but it's so important to have this healthy life and to have a life that your ego, you could go in line with what the nature is or divine is or God, if you like. Um, so, um, a splendid time to um, to have a lot of hope, to have a lot of wishes, to have a lot of, uh, you know, for people who pub who are publishers, or who are like YouTubers or Jupiter crossing your your um, ninth house is fantastic because it's it means finding purpose in having a bigger audience. Um, but uh, definitely for a lot of people, it's about knowledge of self and wisdom that you are gathering and um, and this uh, more of a practical energy that I see is with the Mercury retrograde. So this is uh, in Capricorn, in your sixth house. So this will have to do this thinking and rethinking the structures. It's of your day to day routines. And for a lot of you, that will include work as well. So for a lot of Leos, they will, you know, think about, is this the job that I want to keep? Is this the job that I will keep on doing? Um, or if so, I need to change my structure here. I need to change my routines because it's not working or something is, is just working half. And um, so also for people who want to change jobs, when Mercury goes direct around the 19th of January, it's a very good energy. It's a splendid energy, actually. Also for people who will go back and think about their health and how to improve it and how to improve the structures, um, but it seems like the implementation of all that is best after the 19th of January. So maybe you're going to say, yeah, I'm going to start with a whatever, doing some exercises at the 1st of January. Wait until the 19th. Anyway, Virgos. Virgos, this is not the most important month for you, but it's definitely a very um, enjoyable month for you. And that is of, because this Mercury retrograde is not only in a fellow Earth sign, so for you it's not that bad, but it's also in your fifth house of the house of enjoyment, the house of your children, the house of your projects, the house of what you do to enjoy yourself. So with this Mercury retrograde at the very end of the month, with the Venus there, it's definitely, it's on many levels, but let's start with the level of your hobbies and your projects. You want to do something different or you want to go back to something that you already did long time ago. So this could mean like when Mercury goes direct again in the 19th of January, that you start with a hobby that you did when you 20 years ago, for instance, that kind of vibe. And you're going to have a lot of fun there. On another level, this is definitely good for romance. It could be, you know, um, having you having romantic feelings for someone or um, that you already had, you know, it's this retrograde or having conversations with someone. It's a very beautiful someone because it's Venus in a, uh, that is very close to the retrograde, by the way. Um, and it's a very loving person or it can be a very charming person there. So for those of you who are single, it can definitely mean that um, if this is not someone that is coming back and that you're trying to have a conversation with, of course, if, if someone is coming back and you don't want them, I mean, you have free will. You can say, no, thank you very much. Right. So don't take these horoscopes like oh, they're coming back. Right. You, you have your own power. 
But Virgos do, do know that, don't they? Anyway, um, what I'm trying to say here is that if you are single and you could be meeting someone new here and with a retrograde, it shows like you're pondering, you're thinking, ah, what is this all about? And then after Mercury goes direct, you see a different side of them, which is very common. When you start a new relationship, it's very common that uh, you first think this and then you have to fine tune. It's a very, it's a very nice thing for you happening here with this in your fifth house for sure. Also with your children, you could be uh, seeing back your children for some of you, you know, with the uh, with the holidays um, or who are celebrating, you could see your children back. And it's going to be, if that is the case, it's going to be a lovely uh, coming together with this Venus, Mercury and uh, trining your energy. It's all very uh, lovely, practical energy. And, um, but definitely also enjoying yourself for sure. Um, it's always for the Virgos, you know, because, or mostly because... Um, these times are times where, you know, Capricorn time is a fellow earth sign. Now, what else? Jupiter in your eighth house. Now this you feel a little bit less, but it's, it's certainly something positive to have Jupiter in a difficult house like the eighth house. The eighth house and the twelfth house are really complex houses and it's about life and death. The eighth house is about transformation. It's about resources that you share with someone else. So, and it, it's like an item or um, a situation that is coming back from May. So, um, whatever was happening around May time is coming back now. It could be a deepening of intimacy. And a very, you know, sexuality goes through the roof here, could be possible. <laughs> I hope that's the case for you, you know, good uh, sexuality. But even more than that, than just sexuality is intimacy. You know, that's more than just sexuality. It's like... Um, uh, it's like uh, you being you with the good, the bad and the ugly and the other person as well. And that creates bonding, right? It, it simply does. That is what love is all about. And that is what intimacy is all about. And there's an opportunity here for you. Definitely, if you didn't have it because of circumstances or you, both, you are in relationship, you both had to work very hard. You could have a splendid time here with Jupiter coming back into your eighth house. Also for resources, it could mean that there is some positivity around resources, investments, loans, or, um, you know, also when you are like married or sharing resources with another person, that other person could have a, a rise in the income and therefore uh, it has a knock-on effect on you, right? So um, quite positive and, and, and very gentle month for uh, the Virgos. Librans, important month. Important month. As I said, this Jupiter and the, the Mercury are in cardinal signs and you are a cardinal sign as well. So having Jupiter back in two Aries is going to be lovely for you. I love this month for you with this Jupiter on a relationship level, I mean. On other levels, it's a little bit more um, uh, some work to do. That's with the uh, Mercury. But let's start with the good news of Jupiter back into Aries. And definitely, if you are a Libran, between 0 and 10 degrees, you will feel this very much around the 21st that Jupiter uh, is coming back, uh, just like in May time, coming back in the seventh house of relationships. So definitely those of you who had hard times with relationships or being single, there is definitely a chance again, an opportunity again, to get along with people, to attract people into your life. And Jupiter represents people that are foreign or people that have at least a different cultural background, but people that have your best interest, that are very enthusiastic, very bold, a little bit um, impulsive probably, but um, having this Jupiter in your seventh house really gives you hope for new people to coming into your life and um, you feeling uplifted because of that. Now the Mercury and um, uh, the Venus and, and all of that energy um, of the retrograde is in your fourth house and that is the core of your horoscope. So this is a bit more tricky because it has to do with either a move or your home situation or more, I mean, these are two big chunks of the fourth house. It's the, the literally your house or it's your emotions. So a lot of you will think about moving. 
uh, a lot of you people will think about uh, how you can beautify your home or not only moving but also beautifying your home because it's Venus right it could mean like you're thinking about how am I gonna do different curtains or different paintings or all of that uh, kind of stuff the best thing to do is to ponder about it think about it and then uh, around the 19th of January you implement the changes but for some of you it can indeed mean like selling and buying a house and um, with this retrograde it shows instead of saying oh it's gonna slow down you could say i have to change something here where is it that you can change uh, around um, the problems that you've been dealing with or the challenges with the housing that you're trying to find or not finding or uh, selling and it's it's not able to sell it shows here change something and um, it's a it's stressful but if you do you will find uh, solutions here and changing something about the structure so it could mean indeed that if you're selling a house for instance and you know it's a structural problem that you're having maybe you're thinking oh yeah i have to fix it before i can sell it you know that kind of stuff it doesn't have to be all that difficult but it's like not something that you are very keen on doing on another level it's your emotions so with venus mercury you could for instance people are going back to their home country you could be someone like that or relatives coming back and um, there is a rekindling and but it's very you are a bit wary with a capricorn vibe it's like being secure being mature i like it so don't worry if that is the case for you you know of relatives coming back and uh, uh, staying at your place for instance it'll be fine with this energy Scorpios this is not the most important uh, month for you but it's definitely one that you are going to find more meaning when it comes to your routines and to your work you're having Jupiter back in Aries in your sixth house of your day-to-day -day routines you're one of those uh, Scorpio people that everyone is going to slow down you will uh, you know when it comes to their work and so on but you will um you not uh, uh not the scorpios with jupiter there it it means a lot of work but the good thing is that jupiter is about purpose so and definitely a passionate sign like scorpio they need to have find purpose in something that they are doing so i think this jupiter in the sixth house especially if you were trying to change jobs and maybe in may it didn't it didn't uh, went through now is an opportunity that you can so i wouldn't be surprised that you are one of those people that at the end of the year you sign the contract um and uh, of course i know with the mercury retrograde they are saying not signing contracts and blah 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 but that is only happening around the very end of the year so like the 21st and so on so um but uh, for lots of you it's about finding more meaning in your day-to-day -day life it's also when it comes to your health you seem to be a bit more energized there with jupiter in your sixth house which is a lovely thing of course and um, you finding more meaning there in uh, doing those day-to-day -day stuff and because you know that if you're doing the day-to-day -day stuff the day-to-day -day routines it's going to have a good effect on you mentally and physically in the long run now the mercury retrograde is happening in your third house so for those of you who are traveling this is um, um it's happening in an earth sign so earth sign of capricorn goes well with scorpio but it you will have to be uh you could say a bit in the flow of let let go and let god if you're doing that it's not going to be that bad at all so let's say that you are traveling expect that there could be some delays and you you um so take your book with you or that you've wanted to read for a long time you know and maybe it's a book about work you know it's in capricorn or about love because it's mercury venus so you could be reading a romantic novel and before you even knowing it the delay you're loving it you see what i mean um so own it and make it yours and adapt to that and um but this energy could also mean that you are thinking of love a lot with mercury and venus together and you um you're you are trying to change the structure of your thinking as well which is a difficult thing to do but once you do it and uh, it's what do i mean by that it's the narratives that you are saying to yourself that is 
uh, around love, around how you think, um, to restructure that. And you have to demolish it first, of course. You, you know that for sure, dear Scorpios. You know all about transformation. But uh, it could mean that there are some little things of the way that you do things on a daily basis with uh, people uh, in your surroundings that might be seen in a different way. Also with people like siblings and neighbors, that could be you seeing them back, you know, that could be the case because of the holidays or you're doing something at home uh, for the neighborhood. That is going to give you a lot of joy and a lot of uh, loving energy because of uh, the Venus there. But it could also mean reconciliation and thinking about new structures that you're taking in order for you to adapt the uh, relationship to the relationship that you are in in a more healthy way. Sagittarians, I love this energy for the Sagittarians. I absolutely do because Jupiter, you, your ruler, is shifting into a fire sign which you like because you're a fire sign as well. And it's in the fifth house, which is one of my favorite houses. I mean, that is good news for us. As, us I say us, I have a Sagittarius rising. I mean, Sagittarians will definitely feel Jupiter coming back. Um, you know, you, you are Jupiter arriving back in this very um, fiery energy. So around the 21st, expect that you feel a little bit more alive, that you, well, not a little bit, it could be a lot, basically, it could be a lot, that you feel more alive, that you feel more uh, fiery, inspired as well, inspired. It's good for ins having inspiration. If you're a creative person, this could mean that you're um, having tons of it. When you are um, single, for instance, this could mean a new romance. Maybe it didn't work out in May, but now you've got a, bit, a second chance, so to speak, with Jupiter in the fifth house. The same for children, or uh, you could uh, um, deciding like, yeah, I want to have some kids here. And um, it's all very optimistic and it's all very flow. Uh, it flows very easily. For those of you who are single and who are meeting someone new, it's, it's going to be some um, you know, a relationship that is very fiery, but also very Jupiter-like, which means like it, it lifts you up and um, there are a bit like a mentor almost for you. And uh, you learn a lot from them and vice versa. And they, they can be very fiery and feisty themselves, but um, maybe from another culture with Jupiter there or a different background, it doesn't always have to be another culture, a different background. And uh, you could be traveling for fun with Jupiter there in the fifth house or you starting your own business. And, uh, you know, it's the house of projects and um, you might be you might have done some preparation already uh, as from May uh, up until like September, October. But then you felt that things have to be reviewed and now you can do this full force and that can be very um, very positive. Certainly on a very general level, you are going to have more fun. You're going to have more fun. No doubt about it. Whatever is, ha there is an opportunity there to tap into that energy of fun, of uh, buoyancy, of uh, going out with your friends, doing things with your friends, um, you know, go for sports with them, enjoy yourself, go dancing, go fitnessing, whatever it is. It's something uplifting and very bold energy and it's enjoyment it's very sp the spontaneity my goodness me haven't we do, don't we need that and Sagittarius and Aries are the signs that are super spontaneous and because of what's been going on in the world on the world level you could say a lot of restrictions and you know with the COVID and all of that we need people who are spontaneous and who can just live their lives and are just being themselves and being very full of spirit because that is inspired being full of spirit and you're definitely going to be that example this mercury um retrograde is it happening in capricorn in your second house so what is that all about this is surely about your money your money and your self-worth and the things that belong to you there is a transformation going on for a long time with pluto there but now there is some things to definitely uh, once and for all, certainly when Mercury goes direct around the midst of January, 19th of January and onwards, you want to 
stabilize and put the structure of your finances, improving them. So there could be some things that you have an opportunity now, or, you know, when, when there is a little bit of, um, uh, you say, oh, that's, that's a bit hard to do, or it's the structure. There's something about the structure that you could even improve. It doesn't mean to say that it's bad now, but that you could even improve when you fine tune it, when you, um, think about it and when you consult maybe a, an accountant or um, you could definitely improve your finances with a mercury retrograde in the second house but you need to see it you need to um, and I think you will I think you will so it could have to do with contracts as well around resources and um, also thinking about um, buying for instance very qualitative long-term um, assets or, or things because it's in the sign of Capricorn so it wants to be good quality all the good stuff with Venus there that you're loving it and but maybe you want to do a, a purchase that is quite expensive take your time take your time try to look at the structure of your money how you can change it and and, and off you go Capricorn, super important time, of, of course, always this time of the year is an important time for you. But definitely with what is going on now, Jupiter in your fourth house is amazing energy. I love it. I love it because for many of you Capricorns, it's on your emotional level. Of course, you are going to have your new moon around the, just before Christmas time, the 23rd, there is a new moon on one degree of Capricorn. So it's like your new year. It's, it's already starting then. And um, that's always a fresh energy for you. But um, as I said, the combination of this Jupiter in your fourth house is you thinking about your emotional comfort, your emotional well-being, let's put it that way. So that could be some um, opening up, uh, you finding yourself more of a parent for yourself. That is basically how you can feel more nurtured than ever. Not with, It doesn't matter how old you are, but with Jupiter entering the fourth house, it's always a, an extra security. Like, And you people, Capricorns, you do need your security. And that definitely also uh, quality and, and very, um, you could say, practical security. But in the fourth house, it's about your emotions. Yes, literally, it could mean for you that you are going to move bigger, grand, more grandiose, so to speak, or going to a place, um, you know, buying and selling in order for you to uh, live in a place where you have more space, literally. But I think for a lot, most of you, it's going to be feeling more secure within and having more... Um, confidence it's one of my favorite transits jupiter through the fourth house it gives people confidence it gives people um, strength in that respect and it's very fiery so you're gonna feel it very that that it it, it um, brings you a liveliness and you find more meaning in um, you nurturing you and or literally in your home but for many of you it's on that emotional level because you've worked hard and uh um, when Jupiter was in the third house to improve your communications, to improve how you think and to um, be more expansive in the thinking. And now you're reaping those fruits, so to speak. And then, of course, the Mercury retrograde in your sign. Of course, those of you who've got planets around 24 degrees will feel it the most, but um, all Capricorns will feel it. And this is typical a time of reinventing thyself and I think it has to do also because it's very close to Venus how you love yourself so it's perfect timing for you dear Capricorns when Mercury goes direct again which will be around the 19th of January to have a total new way of you presenting you so a new haircut a new but do it after that Mercury retrograde um, a new garderobe um, but you know you could be busy with uh, uh, first of all, putting away all the old stuff, and uh, that is no longer um, that is no longer suiting you. Probably you're one of those. You're one of those. This is a stupid thing that I'm saying now, but probably you're going to be one of those who's getting presents around Christmas time. That is not really your favorite present, but you know there is a way to 
give it away or sell it or whatever it is and in order for you to achieve something that you do want so see it in that respect what do i want instead of receiving something and, and say oh i received something and ugh, it's not what i want and well buy it yourself but do it after this mercury retrograde and um but on on a, on a more you could say a bit of a deeper level it is definitely how you present yourself it's going to be very more um clear after the mercury goes direct so there is some communications that you will have to do some not the easiest communications with pluto there as well so it shows that there is some stuff that you need to talk about definitely when it comes to when you are in a relationship but venus is there as well so don't worry that you're going to build bridges or the fear of rejection no it has to be said in a beautiful way or not in a beautiful way but in a in a fair way let's put it like that and you will um you will achieve a lot and definitely that will be clear after um the 19th of january aquarians this is no, not the most challenging month for you aquarians have been having quite of a rough time with all this saturn uranus square energy and um, the eclipses and all of that so it's a little bit of a break that you're getting here in december enjoy it it's going to be more social for you with jupiter in your third house this shows opportunities opportunities to do some short trips to travel to uh, enjoy conversation with people that are uh, in the neighborhood, neighbors, siblings, um, learning something, reading something, communicating, lots of communication. And it's an Aries, so it's very inspiring for you. It's a bit the same energy as in May, but now when, and especially if you have your own job, for instance, and you wanted to have a little bit more of a boost when it come to your when it came to your PR, now you've got a second chance here to do a little bit, not a little bit, a very big um pr stunt almost you could say or not a stunt but there is possibility for expansion your uh through these um you know public relations kind of energy that you're having with jupiter there in your third house you could be learning something new you could be teaching and finding a lot of enjoyment and purpose because of that so if you do want to learn something you do so um and you know with jupiter uh, in the first house uh, in the first house in the third house at the very end of the year it could mean that in january you're gonna start a new course uh you're gonna do some trips that is all going to give you a lot of purpose in life this mercury retrograde though is in your 12th house so this is something in capricorn that you're not that you might not even be aware of so when people have mercury in the 12th house their dreams become very vivid their dreams are going to be very telling venus is there as well so it could mean that this is about love that there are some things around uh, love that you need to sort out and that um that are a bit in you could say behind the scenes people might not know that you're thinking about love people might not know you you might be having a crush on someone as well that is uh, not available with mercury and venus in the 12th house but whatever it is there is this retrograde phase so it's good for you to think about it and to think about a structure that you want to go forwards with and your attitude around love so for instance why you are falling for for those people that are not available not all of you but some of you will question that and will say to themselves oh yes maybe it is because i'm lacking something in a current relationship how can i restore that and how can i work on that uh, behind the scenes so when readers and mercury comes into aquarius which will be later on you know the next month that i'm a bit more prepared and more in control of things and that i find that i have some influence in my life here so a lot of thoughts behind the scenes a lot of pondering but it's good it's good to uh because otherwise you are going to put everything under the carpet which is the blind spots and you don't want that that's the negative side of um uh of energy in the 12th house um so um yes but i think all in all it's quite you know go for that jupiter in your third house enjoy yourself have some fun connect with people
that's something that you're good at anyways Pisces this is um, for you also not uh, more of a month of relaxing and definitely a very busy month Mercury retrograde in your 11th house uh, in an earth sign earth signs goes well with Pisces It's a very busy month I always find it when Mercury goes retrograde in the 11th house that people um, you know it's the typical uh, explanation of you seeing friends back that you haven't seen for a long time and that can be transformational basically as well that uh, um, or you're thinking about some friends and you want to restructure the way that you do friendships that could mean you know also that's also a possibility there is with Venus there Mercury there a lot of love amongst friends as well as possible it could mean that a friend turns into something more than a friend with this retrograde and you will find out after this uh, Mercury goes direct again at the 19th of January so that's interesting there that is talking about a change of a structure in your friendship uh, house so if you are open for that or if it fits your story there's definitely here possibility of friends becoming more than friends and um, and but on another level it can have to do even if you have your own business it's a money house uh, so with the mercury retrograde it means that how can you uh, it, it means that clients come back and that there could be a lot of work that you're having and a lot of conversations a lot of uh, um, but also that you could restructure something so that you get more clients and you will if you do that you will um, so your aspirations the, it's it's the um, it's a very classical for the Piscean energy now for the end of the year it's it's uh, pondering about your goals the future it's all that energy and um, but actually you could say for the Pisces it's better not to start the first January with all the things that you want to do but around the 19th and onwards especially when it considers contracts and last but not least Jupiter in Aries in your second house amazing because Jupiter is your ancient ruler together with Neptune the modern ruler of the sign of Pisces but Jupiter in your second house is I've seen it many uh, in in um with many Pisces uh, as clients and people uh, that I know that they are gaining confidence and um, they are getting stronger here with Jupiter in the second house not only because finances they are doing in a different they have been doing so much and be redoing things in a different way and trying to do that in a different way and Jupiter in the second house shows not only a possibility for more money but also a possibility for more um, you could say for more confidence and for more um, being aware of your own talents being aware of um, finding purpose uh, in the assets that you have I've, I've seen also many Pisces uh, really um, doing a lot of work when it comes to uh, old belongings that they don't need anymore and with Jupiter in the second house it means new belongings it means like you could uh, buy stuff for you that is very meaningful very very new Aries fresh uh, but um, also very meaningful so enjoy that as well I think that's it that's it in general and for the signs um, a short video but I think you know a little bit about the flavor and how this you know Christmas and, and New Year's Eve and all of that it's quite gentle energy it's not like last year but um, it's quite lovely energy of course depending on your personal horoscope but I wanted to give that message already now thank you for watching and I appreciate that a lot and uh, see you next time bye bye